hey there welcome back to my channel so this time we are going to see uh, how the lightning out works so lightning out is a new feature in the salesforce where we can surface our lightning component outside of the salesforce so we can use our lightning component in sharepoint heroku or any web application and that's so awesome news imagine what we can do uh, with this approach and what we can do with this functionality ask a developer to create some component in your salesforce org like uh, give me latest account or let give me some of the cases which are escalated by that user and something and show that information as a widget on any of your corporate site or anything so this is just a very small poc it's a node.js application and i will walk through my code and i will explain you uh, how the lightning out works so before showing the code let's see the demo in action so i have my node server here and i'm saying let's start a node server and my node server is actually the https and of course http server as well so uh, let's see so if you can see here on the my console we, i see that server is running on port 8080 and https server is running on 8081 so i would open my browser and here 8081 so this is a sample component sample uh, node.js application i am saying let's log into the production and actually this is the demo i used to show in connecticut salesforce user group uh, developer group and let's see so here i'm authenticating my connected app so uh forget about the force util it's just a sample connected app that i used by the name force util so what it basically is saying that allow my node.js application that is a local host 8081 against my developer org where i am already logged in and from that org i will use the lightning component to show on my local host so if i can show it on my local host of course i can show it on any https website like ruby on rails php net anything so let's allow it and here we go so uh sorry for the format mismatching the reason is the lightning component uses slds and this application i used uh, bootstrap bootstrap and slds are not friendly to each other but i hope you got a little bit idea that what I, so here what i'm doing is i'm showing a chatter component and the chatter component is a standard salesforce component so and that's it that chatter component displayed so even though this is my local host but everything displayed here is coming from straight from my salesforce instance which is this one so first let me show you the lightning component which i have used and then i would walk through the node.js application code so this is my developer console hopefully i already have okay so this is very simple lightning app i have defined our application i said access is global and in order to use our application as a lightning app lightning out you have to extend ltng that means lightning out app uh, class and then i'm saying here is that this application is dependent on force chatter component so basically i have not created any component i am using a standard salesforce chatter component here after that one thing to note is we have to whitelist our server like in the local host 8081 in a course section and which is a cross origin resource sharing setting in the salesforce that means uh, salesforce will allow will pass some header information uh, to uh, header information to your application saying allow rendering of this secure component on your application so basically what i said i have whitelisted my application now i have informed salesforce that i would be accessing resources from the salesforce on this my website which is a localhost 8081 and any anything or any from the salesforce to my application and they would pass allow 
content origin http header and so so here i'm setting i am done with the course and let's jump directly on the coding so if you know a little bit about the net node.js uh, server.js this is actually my starting file and here I am saying that in Node.js I would need express module, I would need HTTP request body parser, I would of course need HTTPS as well and FS. So this is, this is all the basics of Node.js. One thing to note here is in my Node.js I have allowed course. Uh, I have enabled a course here as well and I am setting some header informations here and one thing to note is like I have passed the next method that is a callback and on all my routing if you see here next next everywhere and one thing is like to uh, enable to have your node.js application as the HTTPS enabled we have to create a certificate on your instance on and how to create a certificate it's very easy just install OpenSSL so OpenSSL is installed on my system and uh, let me see one thing here I will go on my computer advanced property here advanced setting environment variable and if you see we have to define OpenSSL underscore config variable and this would be nothing but the path of OpenSSL.config and once you have that path with you you can simply use uh, this file let me close this how to create a certificate so this is just a two command we need to use so first we would generate a csr.pem just use exactly this command and I would be committing this in my git repository so you would not have to go through uh, anything else and this is a open SSL executable file as well I would suggest to download the latest executable file but you can download it from here as well so we have this certificate available and then we have a uh, on our node.js application this is I what I said that read a key and then read a certificate and enable this option on the HTTPS server and that's how I got my I mean of course my Google is not able to validate it Google Chrome because it's on my local system but it's still an HTTPS so that part is done let's go back what exactly is happening so when we are saying that we are entering localhost 808 sorry 8081 my bad so here I am on this website so this is the actually so in node.js I am saying any path comes redirect them to index.html this is my index.html and when we click on the either production or the sandbox basically <laughs> what it does is uh, it generates the uh, give me one minute okay so this is the production button and uh, same is a sandbox and let me see here I have used jQuery library I have used jQuery cookies and I have used custom JavaScript which is OAuth.js let me open OAuth.js uh, client JavaScript over dot js here and here you can see I have provided app ID client ID client and then redirect URL so so basically you would have to create a connected app uh, this is my actual client ID and of course after this demo I would be deleting it so no need to copy this value so once we click on the production or the sandbox it will open a small window this is my connected app and once I click on allow it would redirect me on OAuth page basically and if we see here on my server.js this is OAuth callback page and on OAuth callback page basically I am decoding the values and I am then redirecting back to the main.html let's see what exactly is written in our main.html so uh, this page is our main.html and if I go back here to see how many javascripts I have 
used so first and foremost is lightning out.js now every developer or sandbox and or any salesforce instance actually have the lightning out.js available as a public so even if i open my google chrome in icognito mode where i am not logged into the salesforce and try to access this javascript you can see that this javascript is available to us so that's a pub you can even use my url or you can use your instance salesforce url then of course i have used jquery jquery cookie so basically on oauth callback when we get the url basically what we are doing is i have a main.js file as well so if i sorry if i go on javascript main.js so main.js actually uh, is a small javascript file i have used and basically it gets the logged in user information and just uh, how many pay accounts there has been used and after the uh, so that's the main.js and in oauth callback basically we are storing back whatever access token we got. So this is the access token which we get from the Salesforce on OAuth callback .html, and there is OAuth, I guess OAuth.js as well here. So basically, if we see this code on OAuth callback, what we are going to do is we get the response, we extract the access token and save in the cookie, same the API version, instance URL, response ID, and all those stuff. Then this is a simple JavaScript. So jQuery cookie is used to use the access token. If access token is not available, we would give the alert message saying you need to log into the Salesforce first. Then create chatter feed. If we are already logged in, basically we are calling create chatter feed method and we want a chatter feed for news. So this is actually method which does all the magic here. So uh, create chatter feed then in turn calls the setup lightning method so this is the setup lightning method and it passes this method itself as a callback and basically what this callback method does is create a component this component it creates this component so basically your lightning application can have a multiple component dependency so basically lightning out needs to be defined at the app level not the component level and now one component one app can have a multiple component so to render each component or any of that component we have to explicitly use this method which says create component so let's say if you need to render two or three components from that lightning app you need to call that create component method that many times like two or three times now in this case i only want to render the force chatter i used a create component method only once and i said what is the name of components of course the name of component is this and the parameters which is required by the component and where do we want to render this component so we want to render this component on the component uh, the element on HTML which has this ID and that's it uh, all the magic then done by the lightning out.js lightning out.js just needs to have the access token and once it has a valid access token it can render any lightning component which is allowed to that user on your uh, application and that's really I'm mean, awesome news imagine I mean few years back i'm not sure if you know there was i google concept where the google pay page can be built up lots of widget and the same way we can use a lightning as well you have your corporate website and you can use three or four different different widget so the lightning com what i want to say is the limit of usage of the lightning component is just not limited to the salesforce but we can use a lightning component as widget anywhere outside the salesforce well, I think it's time to wrap up. Thanks for watching this video. Hope I was helpful and we learned something new together. If you have any feedback, please let me know in comment section of this video. And of course, if you liked it, don't forget to upvote and subscribe to this channel.